to Get Real with STL, a woman empowerment podcast hosted by STL Albaba. Hello and welcome to another episode of Get Real with STL. Today is Tuesday, May 15th, 2018. So if you're one of my loyal listeners, you know that I never record episodes on Tuesday. It's always Monday, but I did fall off the tracks for this week and my life is still unsettled as I'm looking to finish the renovations in my new condo and hopefully moving there soon. But until then, with all the unsettlement, I just dropped the ball and I could not record an episode yesterday. So I'm making it up to you and I have a very rich episode waiting for us as I go through the success principles again. So if you're tuning in for the first time, this is a book that I came across written by Jack Canfield, How to Get from Where You Are to Where You Want to Be. And I've uh, realized this book contains 62 very rich, successful principles that are extremely practical, uh, and I found them extremely helpful for whichever industry you seem to be in uh, and in life in general. So uh, I dedicated an episode for each principle, and right now we're on principle number 42. So for today, I'm going to summarize a few of them because uh, these ones are a little bit short and they're very uh, related to one another. So we'll go through uh, three or four principles. We'll see how it goes. So what I do uh, to give you perspective if you're uh, tuning in, you know, for the first time, like I said, I do offer self-development hacks, but I also offer my own opinions on it as I go. Personal reflections, personal stories, uh, or just experiences that I've been through or that I've witnessed uh, that I can share to add context and perspective and guidance to you uh, as you listen to this episode. Or, and sometimes I also interview people with inspiring stories. So next week's episode, I'm planning it to be an interview. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but for now, let's get into it. So success number, success principle number 42 is called just say no. So one of the quotes that this chapter starts with is by Sue Patton Thole, who said, you don't have to let yourself be terrorized by other people's expectation of you. And she's the author of The Courage to Be Yourself. And this is such an important thing that I've spoken about in the past, but it's always a good reminder to listen uh, to this feedback and, and offer different perspectives on it. Because our lives could get very, very, very overwhelming. We live in a world that's always highly competitive. It's extremely overstimulated, whether it's the social media that we have access to, just walking on the street, we, 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 we are exposed to just so many things happening all the time so we simply cannot um leave it to destiny to to be in charge of our lives we need to be more in control of that and learning to say no is extremely beneficial and it's proved to be something that i uh have started adapting in my own life in order to uh avoid dropping the plate on something there's only so much activities and extra curl of things that you can be um, you know, exposed to, aside from your full-time job, aside from your family commitments, aside from your social circles, aside from your health and fitness and mind and spirit, like just listing all the all the areas in life that require our attentiveness, that alone is overwhelming. So on top of that, we are bombarded with different types of requests and different types of engagements. So knowing how to say no is extremely important and you're only able to do so when you know your priorities and you know your values. Uh, and therefore, when you when you do that, it's, it becomes much easier for you to uh, eliminate doing certain things. Because sometimes what I noticed, we if we're unable to tackle a specific task right away, we postpone it. And in the back of our head, it's always going to be there festering us because it's still undone. It's still something just in the background. And we keep postponing it and then we are dragged down by the guilt and the, um, you know, feeling of just procrastination in itself is, is frustrating versus instead of postponing it, if it's not important, just eliminate it out of your life right away. So 
that's why sometimes delegation is great if you're able to you know have that task be fulfilled by other people but if that's not an option uh, and that task is not important for you then eliminate it altogether so um this one particular not activity but i would say suggestion that was offered by the author here he actually created a list called do not do list so usually we're familiar with to-do lists but he actually made it easier for himself to know how to uh, avoid situations in which it makes him uncomfortable, for example. He has a personal do not do policy and a professional do not do policy. So that if he ever comes across an encounter that falls into that category, that's on his do not do list, he doesn't even have to think twice about it. And that clarity saves him time. So in a world where we're, like I mentioned earlier, bombarded with things, if we have clarity on what it is that we are willing to do and what it is that we're not willing to do, uh, we are much easier, it's much easier for us to navigate through our days and our choices. So I'll just give you a few examples of the things he's mentioned here uh, on his personal and professional do not do list. So personally, uh, he never lends uh, his car to anybody. He doesn't lend money to anybody. He doesn't schedule any outside social events on Friday night. It's a family night. He doesn't discuss charitable contributions over the phone. He expects um, these requests to be given to him in writing. So having these sort of standards and these sort of values on a personal side, if he was to encounter any type of situations that fall into these categories, he's automatically going to be able to say no uh, without thinking twice about it. And that obviously saves you a lot of time. Uh, on a professional do not do policy, Here, these are some of the things he's written. He doesn't give endorsements for books and fiction. He doesn't lend his books to other people. He doesn't schedule more than five uh, talks in one month. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't co-author books with first-time authors, and he doesn't do individual counseling or coaching. Uh, he only he only wants to work with groups. So this was just some examples from the author's do not do list, and it's just simply to offer you some groundwork to start with. And I believe that reflecting on certain things in my life, once you're clear about your standards and your value and you have a very good understanding on, in, uh, on what falls in your do not do list, people have so much more respect for you because you're clear and you're uh, persistent in the things you do. So if you uh, say yes one time and then you say no the other and you say maybe the third time, then you're going to be confusing and people won't know what, where you stand on certain issues. But if you have a persistency and consistency in the things that you stand for, your values are much easier communicated to people. So I'm taking this a little bit deeper than the author did just because I really feel like it reflects on so many other areas in life and it bleeds into more than just giving you more efficiency in organization as far as your planning strategies are concerned, but it really reflects on having more authenticity in general because now you're capable of leading the life that is so much more in alignment with your values and your standards. So I'll give you an example. Uh, when when you when you're when you a student or you're a fresh graduate, at the beginning you're going to every networking event possible. You're going to uh, all sorts of different extracurricular activities. Uh, you're raising your hand up for extra work uh, in, in your job because you want to prove yourself, but you also want to learn and meet as many people as you can. But as you're maturing in work, then these things are simply not sustainable. They're burning you out and they're simply distracting. So understanding exactly what kind of events you need to be at, how much extra work can you really handle without letting it seep into other areas into your life, um, and, and making sure that you're on top of your game becomes more and more important uh, the more mature and the more responsibilities are tackled on uh, your tackling. So this is just my two cents and I do believe that having a do not do list as clearly as possible on your personal and professional side offers you that authenticity. So um, one other thing 
is mentioned here. Uh, I'll, I'll go through it. I'll read, I'll read you the title first. He said, if saying no is so important, then why is it so hard to say? So this is such a great question because a lot of times we're first with situations where we know that the answer is no, but we have such a hard time communicating it. And, and that could be for different reasons. Why do we find it so hard to decline people's requests? So let me, let me share with you a few thoughts. I believe that when we say no, we run the risk of being not liked by the person that's making the demand. So if somebody is asking us to borrow money or somebody's asking us to go to a charity event or somebody's asking us to stay late and do work or whatever the case may be, professionally, personally, whatever it is, when we say no, we are rejecting that person essentially and we just like we personally do not like to be rejected, we also don't like to inflict that feeling on some other people. But it takes practice, actually, in order to distinguish between saying no to the task versus saying no to the person. This is really something I recently had to reflect on because sometimes, uh, let's say uh, your mother calls you and asks you for something really important for her. If it's really such a conflict with your schedule, as much as you love and want to help and support your mother, you should also make it uh, clear to her that these particular requests, let's say, do not make sense to you or your schedule. So you're not saying no to your mother, you're saying no to that task your mother is requesting from you that simply uh, won't, be, won't be achievable by you. Uh, for, for whatever reason. So just understanding that in itself can offer a lot of clarity and help us in our communication because it's not necessarily the message of us saying no and declining certain things that matter. It's how we communicate that message that ultimately leaves the lasting impression on the person making their request. And that's how we preserve our reputation. And, and this is really the standards that I'd personally like to hold myself accountable for. So whenever I say no, I wanna make sure that I provide clarity to that person to why it is that I'm, that I'm declining this request. Is it a scheduling conflict or is it something I would never consider even if my schedule permits? It's important to, to clarify that and to communicate it to the person because if it's something that you will never consider regardless of your schedule, then making that clear from the get-go saves you future declines and if you, it saves you future awkward situations. For example, let's say um, you don't like to attend political events. So if a friend keeps asking you to tag along for a political event, uh, then then making it clear to her or him from the very get-go that these are events that you simply uh, included on your do not do list for whatever reason it is then um, and communicate you know depending on that friendship you may want to communicate these reasons to your friends just to offer clarity about your position it just makes life so much easier for you and for them so I just wanted to offer you this little feedback because I find that there's a beautiful thing about the art of communication. And if we choose our words wisely and we remain true to who we are and offer that clarity to the people around us, then there's so much so much more we can do with our relationships and with our lives in general. Which brings me to the next uh, principle, which is number 43. So this episode, I'm combining principle number 42 and 43 together because they're a little bit short, but they're also very connected. Uh, principle 43 says, say no to the good so that you can say yes to the great. Now, I know that uh, when this book was written and this principle was written, Jack Canfield did not have the dating life in, in his mind. He was probably talking more from a business perspective. But I really want to reflect on that principle in dating uh, as well. For those of you who are single listening to the, this podcast, uh, because what I want to illustrate from these principles is that once you, how you do one thing is how you do everything. So even though we're talking about self-development and we're extracting tips and tools, mostly from professional and career perspectives, I want to prove to you that these things apply in every area in life. So for example, if you're going out with people and you're meeting people that you think uh, are good enough and you end up settling for that because you're 
let's say you're lonely or you're scared of being alone or whatever the case may be it's like summertime and you just want to have somebody to go out with whatever the case is bear in mind that when you're saying yes to the good you're you're pretty much uh, occupying the space that could be really uh that could belong to the great and, and that really is the standard I have to hold myself accountable when it comes to relationships, when it comes to personal commitments, when it comes to work standards or whatever the case is. When you eliminate the good out of your life and the bad for that matter, you make space for the great. And that's really what it boils down to. It's really being consci conscientious conscientious i wanted to insist to pronounce that word right and i did so i'm gonna do it again because it was fun conscientious there it is all right so if you want to be conscientious of how you are actually uh, leading your life then you have to realize what are the things in your life right now are uh -huh, meh they pass they barely pass the good test they're just there uh whether it's the friends or the people or just the activities you're involved in that are just not amazing. They're just simply there to fill in a space or a gap that is currently in your life and, and you just didn't know what to do with it. So please be honest with yourself and reflect on these things as we go. So for um, to go back into the chapter itself, the principle um, the that Jack Canfield was talking about is stop majoring in the minors so that's an interesting perspective and what he means by that is that instead of dedicating yourself and your time to mundane non-productive time-stealing activities which we all do especially when we have our phones in our hands then what we can do instead is allocate these times to pursue um events or certain activities that drive more fulfillment out of our life more growth more um, contribution and, and whatever it is else that you seek. So this is obviously not earth shattering news to you. I'm sure you've heard this advice many times. But like I said, it's really always good to remind ourselves of that. And sometimes we hear certain things at the right time that we need to hear it. So it really offers us time to pause and reflect on why it is that this message just crossed our path today. So sometimes I randomly choose a podcast when I'm commuting to work and, and often uh, the messages I'm hearing are not necessarily new to me, but it would have been something I needed to hear right that day or right that period that I'm going through in my life. So as I'm sharing these principles with you, bear in mind, it's no coincidence you're listening to me right now. And there's a reason, um, you know, these messages are coming your way for whatever it is that you need to do in order to refine the time you're spending and ultimately get more fulfillment out of, of your life while obviously staying authentic and real, which is what this whole podcast is about. So I've mentioned with you before the uh, 2080 rule, which uh, suggests that in our, if, if we look at our life in general and jotted down the activities that we do that brings us the most success we find that 20 percent of our activity produce more than 80 percent of our success there's a certain theory behind that and uh, the whole concept of time management is to really drive more of these activities that bring up uh, 80 percent of our success so we can even double our success and, and triple it over time when we end up focusing on these core activities. So this is why it's important to say no to the good, to make time for ourselves to say yes to the great. So how can you determine what's truly great so you can say no to what's merely good? These are just some things that you can start down with. First, you can start by listing your opportunities, one side of the page for the good and the other side for the great. So maybe you can draw a, a table and just a column in two. Then you can talk to your advisors about their potential new pursuits. So people who traveled the road before you, people who are doing the things you aspire to do, consult with them and see exactly what are the things you need to be doing. Then you need to test the waters. 
So rather than just taking a leap of faith and just jumping into the opportunities, sometimes you can do little mini tasks along the way just to learn or you know trial and error in order to see what exactly works for you because as much as we can consult people we are very unique and, and certain things might work for us that didn't work for anyone else or vice versa and finally look at where you spend your time so determine if those activities that truly serve your goal or if you're or if you just are, are filling up your time with time wasters so if saying no would free up your schedule in order for you to be more focused on your pursuits, then it's absolutely worth it to not only understand where you need to say no, but like I said earlier, how to say no. And that makes all the difference, my friends. So that is all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, podcast and I look forward to future episodes where we can learn, grow, and most importantly, Get real together. Take care, everybody.